stabilizing. The word says it all. This video is going to be an overview of stabilizing. There is so much to cover. In later videos, I will try to break down the process step by step from a greater operator's point of view. I want to point out that some cities and municipalities don't need to use stabilizing as part of the street building process. Here in Edmonton, Alberta, the subsoils are often wet clay or silt and the city engineers incorporate stabilizing into almost every street building project. Whereas other cities like Calgary to the south of us, their subsoils are more like shale. They don't need to use the magic of Portland normal. That's the term they use for the cement powder that gets spread onto the subsoil at a predetermined rate, kilograms per square meter. If you went to Home Depot and bought a bag of cement powder, you would be getting the same product, Portland Normal. To make a batch of slurry to pour a concrete structure, the median is sand, gravel, cement powder, and water. When you are stabilizing, the median is dirt, cement powder, and water. It never ceases to amaze me the transformation between mud that you can barely drive through with a grater to the finished material that is so hard that you can barely cut it with the grater. That is if an adequate amount of cement powder has been spread and it is left to set up for a few days. Another thing about this process that blows me away is that the finished stabilized product is practically impervious to water. I have uncovered stabilized material that has been submerged under water for years. And when I bear down on it with the greater blade, I cannot cut it. In which case I had to rip it to remove it. In this upcoming video, I will be mingling with the stabilizing crew, which I always look forward to. Some of them have been around Standard General as long as I have, and they are well seasoned. I did a voiceover on most of this video. I hope that you enjoy it. Now, this cement powder, the Portland Normal, usually comes to the job site literally by the B-train load. And here we are offloading from the B-train to the spreader truck. Now the spreader truck has a vacuum pump on it and it creates a low pressure area inside its tank which draws the cement powder from the B-train through that four inch hose onto the spreader truck. Now here we are a few minutes later and uh, Neil is spreading the cement powder out onto the subgrade. And that vacuum pump that I mentioned is now creating pressure inside the tank of this truck. And the pressure is forcing the cement powder out onto the spreader belt. I wanted to do a freeze frame of uh, Neil spreading this cement powder onto the subgrade so that I could emphasize a few things. Where I've drawn this red circle on the ground, I wanted to show you how the spreader truck is making ruts in this clay. I wanted to show you how soft the ground is. And you see where it's real soft here, they're spreading 30 kilograms per square meter. 
Whereas up in front of the spreader truck, they switch to 10 kilograms per square meter, where the ground is a lot harder. But to, to emphasize how effective this stabilizing is and how well it works, two days later, where you see these uh, ruts, it actually passed an axle test and it passed the density test. So I just wanted to show you that that's how well it does work. Now, the day prior to this scene, we did what we call a pre-roll or a pre-axle test. There's several people present at this axle test. It's usually somebody representing the city of Edmonton, the engineering firm, the foreman, the superintendent, even the person who, who the soilsman or the soils person who's doing the density test, they're usually present. And what we do is drive the grader uh, just at a walking pace and they watch to see how much deflection there is under my tires. And that's how they determine how much cement to use. And that's how we knew that this end of the street was going to get, oh, 30 kilograms. And so we pre-graded it a bit lower. Teresa made a decision to actually pre-grade this area five centimeters low, five centimeters below grade. So that when all this powder went onto the ground and all the water went into it, that it would end up being approximately great. And the volume turned out to be about that. It turned out to be pretty good here. Now, here's Walter doing a little dry mixing. That is, they're still not injecting any water into it. They usually dry mix it twice or three times just to break it up and to get the uh, cement powder mixed into the clay. Because this is 30 kilograms, they'll be mixing the full depth. They'll be mixing 12, mixing 12 inches deep here. And uh, I want to show you the, uh, when Walter lifts up here, I want to show you the drum and how fast it turns and show you the teeth on the drum. He'll lift his tailgate and uh, you can get a look, a look at the drum turning here. There it is there. And Neil is uh, on his second load of cement now. He's already used up the first load. Now here's Phil and uh, Darren, and uh, they're hooking the water truck up to the mixer via this water line. There's Darren priming the pump that draws the water into the mixer. And in the next scene, I will show you uh, that procedure, the wet mixing procedure. Okay, here we are starting to wet mix. And you notice how the water truck travels in sync with the mixer keeping just the right distance between the water truck and the mixer so that the that a hose that's connecting the two of them, you know, it doesn't get interrupted, doesn't get stretched out, it doesn't get underneath the, the tires of the mixer. So there's a little trick to it there, just uh, keeping up the exact right pace so that that all works out good. And right now the water is going from the water truck right into the chamber of the mixer. Because there's 30 kilograms here, Phil will have the, the water turned on full, full blast, as much as it can handle. And uh, the water is being injected right into that mixing chamber. And 
there's Rob standing beside that uh, power transformer. He's just uh, spotting Phil to make sure that he uh, clears these ground rods that are uh, beside that transformer box. You can see how much wetter the material is behind the mixer than it is beside the mixer. There's a lot of water going into that right now. I would say on average uh, uh, you can only stay hooked up to the mixer for about 10 or 15 minutes and the, the, the full load of water will be, will be uh, depleted out of the water truck. Usually, usually 10 or 15 minutes. That's about all it lasts. So it gives you an idea of how much water is going in there. A lot of water is going in there right now. Well, the stabilizing crew is already on their second load of water. How are you doing, Cal? Good, Bert. I'm uh, trying to get a little footage here. Another day in the dirt, Bert. Another day in the dirt. I haven't done one a thousand times. Calvin is actually uh, the superintendent of this crew, but uh, today they're a little short-handed, so he's uh, driving a water truck. You know, in prehistoric years, we actually used to just dump the water on the ground and then come along behind with a mixer and mix it in. But this way of injecting it right into the mixing chamber works so much better. It, uh, it gets the water a lot more uniform, so you don't get wet patches here and there. It's just a, a much, much better way of doing it, I think. Well, the next step here, of course, is to grade this stabilized material and pack it. But that's for another video. If you find these videos uh, helpful or interesting, please uh, subscribe to my channel. And uh, if you don't mind, uh, like me as well. We'll see you in the next video. Thanks a lot.